Welcome everyone, this is Jordan Berry, Instructional Designer at Hack, and this video is designed to give you an overview of D2L's quiz tool. So the quiz tool is one of three assessment tools in D2L, and it allows you to create customized quizzes and exams with a number of different question types and options, like true or false, multiple choice, short and long answer, matching, and it even allows you to create some math questions as well. We'll take a look at how to create a new quiz, how to populate it with questions, and how to set it up so that D2O will automatically grade certain question types for you and publish it to the gradebook. To start, we're going to click on Quizzes in the nav bar. Now this is our quiz area, and once you start making quizzes, they'll all show up in a list on this page. To create a quiz, we're going to click New Quiz, and we're taken to a new page, which is basically our Quiz Builder page. You'll notice that we're on the Properties tab here, and we also have a number of other options or tabs that at the top here that'll help us customize our quiz. We'll take a look at those later, but first, let's start here by giving our quiz a name. Let's say it's Quiz 1 Narratives. We can categorize our quizzes if we want, to group them together by unit or section, or ungraded or graded quizzes, or however you wish to organize your quizzes, but it's really not a necessity. So let's scroll down further. And we'll look here that we can add quiz questions. We'll see that as of now our quiz is empty, so we'll click this button here to populate this area with questions. Now we're taken to a new page, and this is where we can create our quiz questions. So we'll click on New in the top left corner, and we'll see a drop down appear that will give us a great number of choices here. We can see that we can create sections for our quizzes as well as question pools, which we'll look at in another video. And below that are all the types of questions that we can utilize to start building our quiz. True or false, multiple choice, written response, fill in the blank, all the way down to arithmetic and significant figure questions. We don't have time to explore all these options in one video, so take some time to play around with the different question types when you become more familiar with the tool. For our purposes, we're going to create a multiple choice question. So we're brought to a new page where we can start creating our multiple choice question. Here we can add the question text. So what are we asking? Let's throw something silly in here like um, on the television series Seinfeld, which character angers the soup Nazi? Now below is where we can enter our choices on individual lines. One for Jerry, George, Elaine and Kramer. And now you'll see that we can add an answer by clicking here. So let's do that and let's add Newman. To identify the correct response, you'll have to enter the percentage amount beside the right answer. So Jerry and George aren't correct, so they'll get a 0% of the point value. Elaine is the right answer, so she'll get 100, and Kramer gets a 0. We can also give partial value to some answer choices if we like. So you might be thinking, yeah, George kind of anchored the soup Nazi, so let's give students a quarter point or 25% for choosing that response. Now, if you don't want to give partial value for answer choices, that's fine. You can change this by clicking the Options button here at the top. And we'll see that we can provide students with more information if we want, feedback, hints, and descriptions. But we can also deselect the Remove Custom Weights option here. And now our custom weights disappear, and we can choose only one correct answer by clicking the radio button next to it. So let's do that, and we'll just click Elaine. And so now I've changed my mind, and I don't want Newman to be an option anymore. We can delete this option by clicking the X button here. So also, we can randomize the answer choices for each student by clicking this button here, and this will help minimize cheating. And finally, below this, we have a place to put our point value here. So let's say we'll give this two points. Now we're finished, but we want to keep working on the quiz. So instead of just hitting Save, we want to hit that drop down attached to the Save button and click Save and New. And now that quiz question we just created is saved and we're given another blank template to begin making a new question. Let's say we don't want multiple choice this time though, we want true or false. All we have to do is hit this drop down here that says multiple choice and we can choose true or false from the list. And now we're given the true or false template. So we can provide our text question here. Dogs have four legs. The answer is true, so we'll select that. 
and we'll select one point. And now we're done with our two question quiz, so we'll just go ahead and hit save. Okay, so now our quiz of questions appear here, and we can edit them by clicking on the drop down and clicking edit. We can also preview the question and see how it'll appear for students. So let's do that. All right, everything looks good. And so we'll scroll down and we'll click done. So now that we're finished with this area, we'll click done editing questions. And we're taking back to the properties tab. And now we can see that our questions appear below. We have some options here. We can choose how many questions we want to appear on a page for students. If we have many questions, we might want to consider breaking them up into pages so that students are not scrolling endlessly down one page to answer all of the questions at once. Pages kind of chunk the questions and the sections off of the quiz to make the quiz more manageable. We can also prevent students from moving forward or backward through those pages if we wanted to by clicking this. And we can also shuffle the quiz questions so that the quiz appears differently for different students. This is just another way to minimize cheating. So let's do that by clicking this checkbox here. And now we're going to go up to the restrictions tab. Now by default the quiz is hidden from users. So we'll want to deselect that when we want our students to be able to see this quiz. Now in this section we can also give this quiz a due date. So we'll select the checkbox here that says has due date and we'll input a due date. Now students will not be able to take the quiz past this date. Now next are availability dates. So when do we want our students to be able to see and start taking the quiz and when do we want it to disappear from their view? So we'll click here to give the quiz a start date. So we'll say this date here. And then next, when do we want the quiz to disappear from the student's view? Now this selection isn't mandatory and you may want to leave it with no end date so that students can see the quiz that they've already completed after they're done the quiz and they can also look at potential corrections that you gave them. As long as the due date is established, students won't be able to go into the quiz and edit it or resubmit their responses again past that due date that you identified. With no end date, they'll only be able to see that there was a quiz and they'll be able to check for any potential feedback that you provided within it. Okay, we can also choose to display these dates in the calendar as well by clicking here, so why not? Now we'll scroll down to timing and we'll see that we can give students a time limit for how long they'll have to take the quiz. Now by default, it's set to a recommended time limit of 120 minutes. If we want the quiz to end after a certain amount of time, we'll want to click Enforce Time Limit. So now we're, we're given more options. We can change the time limit if we want. Let's say we want to give them 60 minutes to complete the quiz. And we want to give them a grace period of 5 minutes after the time has ended so that they have a little extra time to save and submit their work. And so now we have some more options. After the grace period is over, we can allow students to keep working, which is set by default. Or we can prevent the students from making any further changes to the quiz, so that it'll submit their responses for as far as they've gotten within that time frame. Or we can allow students to continue working, but it'll automatically score their attempt as zero after the grace period. I'm going to prevent the students from working after that time frame, so I'm going to click here. Now we won't go too deep into special access, but basically this function allows you to give certain selected students the ability to take the quiz at a different date or time, and it allows you to extend the amount of time that students have to take the quiz if needed. But that's another topic for a different video. So now we're done with this section and we can scroll up to the top and we can click on the assessments tab. The Assessments tab is where we can manage how D2L will grade and publish the quiz. We'll see that the first option tells D2L to grade our quiz for us automatically as soon as the students are finished taking it. This is a great option. It can save you lots of time grading, but of course, only questions that have predefined answers like true or false, multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank questions can be graded by the tool itself. Others like short answer or written response will be will have to be graded manually by the instructor.
So next is the grade item section. Grade items serve to link the quiz to the grade book. We'll see that there is no grade item attached, so this quiz is not being reflected in the grade book. We can change that by clicking add grade item and a new pop-up is going to appear and we can fill in some details about this grade item. The first thing we want to make note of is that we want to give this grade item the same name as the quiz to minimize confusion. So quiz one narratives. We're not going to spend a ton of time on grade items, but there is another video that we created that explores the grade book and grade items that will be linked at the end of this video in case you want some more information about how to use them. But one thing is to remember that when we add a new grade item, we must make sure that the point value of this grade item matches the same as our quiz. So we'll remember that our quiz is worth three points. So we'll change this default 10 points to three and we'll hit save. Now we'll see that the grade item is listed in the dropdown, meaning that it is attached to the grade book and that D2L can publish those grades directly from this quiz as soon as the students are done submitting it. Now we can do that by clicking this option below and D2L will automatically export those grades to the grade book. Remember, if there are written response questions, you'll have to manually input those points in so that the full grade is reflected for the students. So further down the page, we can change the number of attempts that students get when taking the quiz. We can also choose how D2L will handle those attempts. Right now it's set to one attempt, but we can change it to two, and we can tell D2L to either take the highest score, or we have some other options here by clicking this drop down. Now let's say that we want D2L to average those two attempts, then we'll click average of all attempts. Great. Now we'll save. Now the last thing we'll look at in the quiz tool is the Submission Views tab. This tab allows us to change the information that students will see as soon as they hit the Submit button on the quiz. We'll see that by default, students will see the date and they'll see no questions nor will they see any statistics. And we can change that default by clicking this link, Default View. So we can see that we can custom tailor the message that students will receive when they finish. And we can also change what information they'll have access to within the quiz by scrolling below. We can allow D2L to show students test questions by clicking the yes button here. And we can get more granular with those options by choosing these other items below. We can display to students what questions they got wrong or what questions they got right. Only the questions without student responses or only those that were answered by students. We can also choose to show the answers to the questions if we like. We can show them the score for each question they've earned as well. And below, we can show them their overall attempt score here and can also display some class statistics if we'd like. Now, once we're finished, we're going to hit save. Now, additionally, we can add more views, which means this. We can set it so that students will see different information only for a brief period of time. So say we want to show students all of the answers, but only on a certain date after the quiz has been taken by all students and only for 10 minutes. We can do that by clicking on this and creating an additional view. Let's click on that and see what it does. So we'll give this view a title and we'll give it a date for when we want this view to be opened up and displayed to students. Let's say it's two days after the quiz due date. Next, we'll limit the duration of the view. So once the students click to see their submission and their responses, how long do we want them to be able to look at that information for? Let's check this box and we'll say we'll give them 15 minutes to review the answers. Now, what do we want them to see in this view? As of now, they can see nothing. Let's let them see all the questions that they've answered by clicking yes, and we'll show all the questions with responses and the answer those to those questions as well by clicking these boxes. Now we'll hit save. So now we can see the new view that we created and all the criteria that we set for it. And that's it. Now we can hit save and close and we'll see that our quiz is listed here. It has a due date and availability dates listed and it has this little icon here which means that it's linked to the grade book with a grade item. Now when students are ready to see the quiz, They'll click on quizzes in the nav bar and they'll click on the quiz they want to take. And they'll be given all of the setup information that you included 
for the quiz on this page. And then when they scroll down, they can press Start Quiz at the bottom of this page whenever you have it available to them. And that's it. That's an in-depth look at the quiz tool. If you need any assistance along the way, please feel free to reach out to the CDI team for help at any time. All the best.